Hello everyone, this is Dawn. I just wanted to make this recording to share um, a dream that I had that I feel is connected to an opportunity right now in terms of moving through this time that we are moving through with the current uh, <laughs> the current chaos of um, the day. Um, you know, we've, you know, we've had so far in 2020 here, we've had this, you know, global pandemic situation that we all were affected by in one way or another. And now we have an, an outcry with regard to um, the issue of race. And, and rightly so, this is important for us to look at. Um, and we are all and are each one of us doing that in our own unique um, fashion from our own unique perspective and there's so much I could talk about there but I would like the focus of this video to be on uh, the dream that I had and how it relates to um, perhaps one um, critical question for this time that we're in now um, and the succession of uh, events uh, that will occur because I think we will continue to have a, um, you know, another, you know, another um, revelation or another um, event which could be tied to reactivity and which could certainly be manipulated and controlled. And there's, uh, you know, in all of these things, there is the deeper the deeper uh, spiritual warfare and the deeper uh, agendas that are beneath the surface, um, in many ways, and the and then just the energetic, um, the energy that's running behind all of that, in addition to the, the people or the controlled narrative or things like that. So it's it's a very uh, complex, and it will continue to be. And I do, you know, as I shared in my. Uh, recent videos, I you know kind of was shown this six month period and then the next seven years. And um, one of the things that in terms of um, the nature of change that we're all going through, and you know this call to be the calm and the chaos. And one of the the things that I feel these dreams were speaking to was uh, the opportunity for us to return to nature and to consider organic solutions wherever possible. It's interesting because um, I've been drawn to think about that at various uh, points in the last couple of months in my in terms of my own life and in terms of what I desire for my future personally. Um, and when I had these dreams, I, I sort of was seeing it in a whole new light, this this idea of returning to uh, nature, the elemental kingdom, and what is most true, and, and, and looking at large-scale global cultural and societal events in that light is something, um, it was kind of unique. So just in brief, the dreams, uh, the first dream I had was of a, just a great, um, deluge or flooding that was coming, um, not in any one area, but it was coming from within the earth. It was coming from, um, all around us, like the rivers, lakes, and, and oceans. Yes. But even like, somehow coming up from the earth and coming down from the skies. And, you know, it was just like, you know, the, the imagery was about, um, you know, everything being soaked. And then the second dream I had was much happier. It was about, you know, it was definitely um, a tie into my experience in the years I lived in Ireland and the uh, my connection with the elemental kingdoms through all these, you know, uh, colored orbs and the, the the fairy lights and you know it was in this dream, second dream it was all about the elemental kingdom and the dimensions of nature the you know the fairies and the gnomes and the elves and um, and then their connection to the elements the earth water air and fire and and uh, the spirit realm as well and. These two dreams um, kind of dovetailed when I came out of uh, the second dream of the um, the fairies. And there's a little more specifics in that, but I, I think what's important is just the general um, imagery 
to share with you. And um, when I came out of that dream, I had a really interesting experience. I had, I've been just in the backdrop of everything that's been happening in the last week or so. I've been called to do a lot of um, uh, uh, chanting and, and uh, you know, some of the uh, the things I do when I go on my trips out west, I don't even know what to call them. It's sort of a, a combination of, I think the purpose is to clear. Um, and I, I called one of them the voice for the voiceless to, to clear the space and to, to, I, I'm essentially, you know, doing this sort of, um, uh, I guess chanting is the best word. Like, uh, anyway, <laughs> I don't want to get too far into that, but I, I was doing, I've been doing a lot of that in the last uh, week as my own, contribution to uh what we're you know moving through collectively and and so as I came out of this uh fairy elemental kingdom dream I was uh had a very kind of almost shamanic experience where there was the the presentation of a um a medicine wheel um by a group of of beings and and then this medicine wheel that was presented became like larger than life. It encompassed everything. And the colors on the wheel were um, uh, red, yellow, black, white. And the wheel itself became a sphere. And then from the sphere, the, the, we, the flat wheel became a sphere. And from the sphere and these colors... Um, flowed new rivers of healing and so I, I still don't really um, have the full um, understanding of how this is all connected but I did want to share it because what all of this you know as I'm kind of still moving through it and formulating um, what that means for me and for all of us I've been called back again and again to um, the um, idea of of a of ecosystems and of us considering the ecosystem both in terms of uh, you know both of these events that I've mentioned the COVID-19 coronavirus and then also the um, uh, issue of uh, racial um, inequity and uh, economic disparities and, and other social injustice issues that have been brought to the surface. Um, you know, and yes, the, I will say, you know, yes, there is a manipulation going on, absolutely, of and, and, and uh, uh, controlling of the narrative. And at the same time, there, this, this is real. <laughs> and we need to, um, address it as such but these dreams and this medicine wheel that emerged um and and seemed to be something that they wanted me to speak about um seem to be very connected to this idea of um ecosystems but not just in terms of the natural ecosystem or, or nature itself but of looking at these very various systemic issues and even the energetic uh, what is the word? A disruption. This disruptor. Um, th this signature that is uh, not organic. Let's say inorganic signature. Um, looking at those those things as an ecosystem. Um, okay, what does this mean for us? Right. So here's the best I could determine what it means for me and and perhaps you is the critical question when we are moving through all the succession of energetic waves whatever their cause whatever however they're being co-opted or not um whatever the legitimacy of the issues and whether we need to look at those which in, in all likelihood there is something for us to look at everywhere right that's how we learn and grow but that the critical question or the critical questions come back to this idea of nature and this is what it seemed that the elemental kingdom was trying to speak to me about, and this also the medicine wheel, that our healing will be found um, in um, the diverse um, voices that emerge um, and in the healing waters of asking these questions. You know, what is in this particular circumstance, what is the nature 
of, you know, well, first considering just in general, what is the nature of love? What is the nature of freedom? What is the nature of equality? What is the nature of my life? What is the nature of my contribution? What is, you know, returning to nature and all that is organic? So specifically, we can begin to consider nature and ecosystems and, and you know, more uh, indigenous or native uh, approaches um, in terms of what is happening right now in within you in here what's happening in here what is happening within you what's happening in the various circles of belonging um, that you are a part of and that can happen on many many levels right it can happen um, you know in a local group a group of two or three friends it can happen in a physical gathering of people it can happen in an online space um, it can happen in um, you know c- cities and towns in, in states and countries um, in various um global configurations. So when we look at those three levels, you know, internal and then in circles of belonging, and then the third level being the, what, you know, the, whatever the issue of the day is, or the, you know, what's that happening out there with, for example, the global pandemic, for example, this issue of, uh, devastation within a particular, um, a particular, uh, you know, group of any kind in this, in this most recent case, racial, um, uh, a group of a, a particular uh, people of particular skin color, but when we look at all of these various um, aspects of what's happening, the thing is, we might survive in a world that's where we are where we are driven by something that's served up on a platter is good for us, but we're not going to thrive. We're only going to thrive when we return to our true nature. When we look at those three aspects in terms of nature, what's the nature of what's happening within me right now? What's the nature of what's happening in this circle of belonging? What's the energetic perspective? What's the nature of what's actually happening um, more broadly? And I was, you know, shown too that we, it's about feeling into all of this and seeing what is organic and true to a particular situation and what is inorganic or inauthentic or uh, not natural. And to sort these out is going to be difficult because this uh, interweaving of this has been going on for, you know, forever. Um, in the history of humanity. So I just want to kind of share a little bit about how I'm beginning to use this um, in my own life. So first with what's happening within, you know, um, and and often entryways to be able to use um, this technique and return to nature and and natural, uh, a natural ecosystem to be able to look at it through that lens. Um, The opening can actually come often when we are feeling shame or blame or wanting to move into either one of those. So I'm going to use some personal examples. Um, so first, what's happening within? Um, just, you know, this is a perpetual thing for me personally on my own journey. But, um, you know, it's even, it's easy for me to look at everything I'm, I'm doing in terms of the contribution that I'm making. And just want to chuck it all and just admit, you know, okay, world, I get it. I am an utter failure. Um, because like, you know, X, Y, Z, like I can name all these things, like, oh, I've done this and this and this, or, you know, I've written these books that nobody buys, or I give, I've done these, I've, I was faithful and brought forward this particular, um, body of work, but, you know, uh, nobody cares to listen. And, you know, I, I offer to contribute my voice and my contribution through my own skills you know, free of charge with no expectation of anything in return, you know, five or six different places and, um, get, you know, shut out, shut down or worse, um, you know, a template that has nothing to do with who I am is put upon me by, um, often by those that I deeply admire and love and treasure and want nothing more than to have communion with and, um, enter into a friendship and an an honoring and a celebration of life with. And it's like weird to me, like, and, and so, 
there can be this desire to quit. So I, ha- I can acknowledge, okay, I am feeling either shame about or humiliation about, you know, who I am and what is most true. And also I can look at any one particular thing and say, gosh, I tried my best to share that. And I know it's what spirit wanted me to do. And yet, you know, it's, I don't know what else to do. And, I, and so there's a lot of, I can look at and I can say, yeah, uh, I should just quit. Yep, I should admit. And, I, you know, times I'm even, you know, I've been on the receiving end of that sort of message from others. But but wh- it, whether it comes from others or from myself, it can, you know, that's what can happen within me is there can be this, you know, kind of for my uh, my own, um, the thing that gets me the most often is this, you know, caving in sort of feeling. So here's how I can use that nature in that with regard to that topic. I can ask, what's really true in terms of the nature of my soul? And as soon as I ask that question, what's really authentic? What's really organic here? Well, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that, you know, 90% of what I have, you know, shared has been a hundred, you know, has been aligned a hundred percent with that authentic voice, that true voice, my true nature was given, you know, to me, I feel really good about it. And I can see, you know, that is the natural flow. And it's not, it's the inorganic part is the measurement by uh, numbers or that because, you know, only two people who are subscribers are actually real, you know, real people or who actually are listening to what I'm saying or have connected with me or, or, you know, whatever, all that measurement stuff is that's not, that's not an indicator of what is true and what is aligned with my, the nature of my soul. And the truth is there's a beauty of me being on the way and that's my celebration and the gift of who I am is never wasted. It could not be. It's a valid expression and it's aligned with the elemental essence of who I am. And so that's one example of how I can take a place where I am falling into shame and, and listening to voices outside of my, my, um, well, not I, we should all listen, but uh, but I'm suddenly abandoning what is most true, and I'm or I'm in danger of doing that, and so I can look at the natural um, patterns of expression, the my authentic voice, um, my true nature, and my uh, what is aligned with and what is organic um, in terms of whatever you know whatever I'm doing or sharing, um, whomever I'm being is really what it's about. So that's one example on that internal level. So ask, you know, when, when it comes to you and how you're feeling right now, maybe it's with, with regard to what's happening externally in the world, or maybe it's with, with regard to, you know, you sharing your soul gifts, like the example I just mentioned, or, or, or something else, some, you know, uh, something you're experiencing with a particular relationship or a particular um, issue. You can, that's where you, what you can do is to um, reach for what is authentic and what is aligned with the nature of who you are, with your essential self, your essential journey, your essential truth. So that's a uh, personal example about the what's happening in here. The second area there is what's happening in circles of belonging. And so I'll choose another um, example to share. Um, and rather, than, I'm going to do this rather than commenting on situations that involve others. Um, I want to just go ahead and just use something from my own life. So, you know, c- criticism from others is nothing new. Um to to me, as I'm sure it's not to any of you who use your voice, um, but there can be times when it happens when it's a little more jarring than other times, and um, and our response to criticism or a calling out or a um, and, you know, and sometimes there, like I just want to make the case that sometimes you know, there's real validity to us sharing our point of view. I I do have a personal opinion about how that can be done best. And I I personally prefer it when someone reaches out to me directly. And you know, when when it doesn't happen, it's always an opportunity for me to see where I have perhaps done that. And and there can be the practice of the um, ho'opono opono, the I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. 
but recently, so what's happening in circles of belonging? So I'm going to, I'm going to use something that happened to me, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, maybe I, um, so a part of my own journey has been that I've been in this 33 year cycle that is finally, you know, culminating soon, the end of this year, actually August of this year. And, um, I've been in the midst of this and, and I've been aware of that for, I guess, a year or two, um, in a really big way, but I've kind of been aware of it all along. And, and I've, I've been aware that it's, you know, my part of my path has been to, you know, kind of walk this, be faithful and true, um, and be, uh, have connections with others along the way. Um, but to essentially have been called to, you know, kind of do my quote work and my con make my contribution in, um, somewhat of a solitary way. And so all along, I've been looking for the, the culmination of this, the conclusion of this, which I'm coming up on so that I could connect in a, in a much bigger way with particular individuals. And, and, um, and through the years, as I, and particularly the last couple of years, you know, I've, I felt like uh, a little deflated because it felt like some of those people I've been so looking forward to connect with have, you know, not, it felt like not been honoring of me, um, or my work, but there's this, uh, there was one per person in particular that that hadn't occurred with. And I was like, I can, can't wait to connect with that person. And I, I followed their work loosely for, you know, I don't know, maybe five or six years. Um, I don't watch everything they put out, but I, I followed it. And it, you know, to me, that person has felt like a, you know, part of my soul family. And, so I've had nothing but the highest regard and just I find them to be a beautiful um, witness and to um, all that's unfolding and a, and a voice I appreciate very much. And, um, and then um, something happened where, you know, my, my perception anyway was that that, that person um, made a statement that was, you know, or an observation, I'll say, because I'm sure it came from hopefully from the highest place. Um, but it felt very, it felt like, um, an attack of a portion of something that I have been very called to speak about. Um, and without getting to the particulars, let's just say that it was something that I couldn't, um, if I wanted to, I couldn't, it would be a, a betrayal of myself if I, if I didn't, if I sort of renounced that or said, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I guess I was wrong. So sorry. I, I can't I can't do that because it's it would be a dishonoring of my own um, of my own authentic calling of my own true nature. And so I had this dilemma, you know, it's like it, it, it was jarring. It was it was, you know, I cried and then, um, you know, I thought, well, how do I address this? You know, and I thought of all the choices so I could react Certainly, I could make my own video and say, no, that's not true. Um, or, you know, and I've probably done that in the past. Um, or I could um, reach out personally and say, geez, that really hurts. Or I could dismiss it altogether, um, pretend it was nothing. Or I could deny it. I could say, nope, you know, that is not valid for me, you know nanny nanny boo boo I'm not, I'm not listening um or I could defend my work and my true calling you know publicly or with that individual or I could choose to simply see it as not aligned for me with you know with the true nature of of who I am and so it's just simply not something I need to give my attention to because it's not aligned without any judgment of that individual and, and you know, what they meant. Um, and, and, um, or I could choose to enter into dialogue, uh, but be, because of my own um, particular uh, need to remain, um, have that protected space for what I have been called to do, you know, through this particular time period, I need to, I need to, for my own authenticity, I need to wait a bit on that. But, you know, and that I probably actually will enter into dialogue at some point about this particular thing if, if the person is open to it. But for now, um, it's not so much about, um, any of those things. I, I don't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't in alignment with my true nature to react 
or de- dismiss or deny or defend um, or actually engage in any way. And so that was, you know, within this circle that I am, you know, uh, for better or for worse, a part of and in terms of this online community of people like um, like me um, and you, if you're, you know, if you have a, a platform where you share your voice, like um, all of us who do um, have been called to express in that way, we are, you know, whether we want to be or not, we are um, in um, in a uh, community um, of people who are doing that, and and so. That's an example of how what I did there, you know, for myself was, you know, I asked what's true, what is organic about this for me, you know, for my own experience and what my own expression and then for what I'm seeing from this other individual and from very, and it could be any, it's not any one, you know, it's like many times, you know, this, this happens over and over again. And then also it happens when you are, you know, directly involved as in the case I'm mentioning, it also happens. I have personally witnessed a similar thing happened, uh, um, happened twice, uh, in the last week and a half, um, in the same circle. And then I can, you know, I can, to, to move it to a different realm altogether. For example, I've also witnessed something in a, on local, um, in um, where I am, I live in currently in the uh, South in the United States, and so this issue that's playing out um, is 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 opening old wounds, you know, um, in my state, in my in my city, um, in the region I live in, in in even uh, social groups that I am connected with, and in even family ancestral lineage, um, and. Um, so I have witnessed um, cases where things have been said or um, projected outward in terms of all of those um, those circles and those um, regions, whether they be you know geographic or a um, topical of topic of conversation or even on social media. Um, so the the opportunity as it pertains to this critical question we can ask is, you know, what is right now, what's the nature of love in this situation? What's the nature of freedom? What's the nature of equality? What's the nature of what's happening and what, what is organic here and what is inorganic? And in, in a couple of cases, you know, it's been, it's been, I've had to sit with it for a while, but it's been come to my awareness that, a part of what was going on in any you know given situation was um, a true expression of the individual who was doing the expression or the group uh, through various channels. Um, so part of it was organic and true and authentic, and part of it was not. And see, that's what's happened in our world, right? There, the two streams are so interconnected, and there's been such a you know a, a pollution or a uh, corruption of what is organic and true, that it's sometimes hard to separate out. But um, in one case, for example, I could see um, that the person had, you know, been through, um, they were still in the midst of processing their own um, authentic, authentic experience with regard to what they were going through, which had nothing to do with me or the other, the other people connected to that group or, uh, even the events externally, that there was um, a negative strand running or an energetic um, interference that was running alongside what was true. And so all of this is happening on all of these various levels. So that third level is what's happening out there in the world, what's happening, what the heck, what the bleep is going on right now, and, you know, what's real, and is this, you know, whiplash, whiplash, uh, polarization, um, you know, is there something real here? Is there a needed adjustment? Is this controlled? Um, you know, and then what we will see if we look at, at that is that, you know, certain aspects feel true. For example, there's certainly inequity in, um, and, and there certainly has been a racial, um, uh, uh, divide that has existed. Um, and, 
whether that's been manipulated, you know, or not is a different matter because it has, but, but there, there is systemic racism. There is continued injustice. There are some aspects of society that we have co-created that are rotten to the core. And that is a fact. And yet it's also, so that is true. And the nature, what is natural has been, uh, you know, corrupted and been, um, we, we've been carried so far downstream that, you know, it's hard to separate out. Um, and, and certain aspects of what's happening, um, both with regard to, you know, this current, um, crisis in our nation and world. Um, and, uh, you know, in every crisis, there is an opportunity. Um, but and certain aspects are feel true. And then certain aspects feel like an aberration, like, for example, the false dichotomies that are created that would have you force you to choose one side or the other. And sometimes there is the using of, you know, in, in the name of love, you are pushed to you know, if you don't do this, you're not a loving individual. And, and you know, that's not true. That is an inorganic, inauthentic message that is used and presented as a narrative. It's presented, though, as natural, as aligned with nature. So see, there are so many different levels this happens of. So I'm not here to tell any of us what to think, um, but I want to invite us into this question as we consider the nature of the times and the nature of change and the nature of whatever presents. Let's really examine, you know, let's examine that critical question. You know, what is aligned with the true nature here and what is authentic, what is organic, and then what is being, what artificial intelligence is at work, what, what disruptive energy is at play, what is not true, what is not natural, what is inorganic in this situation. And I feel like that this is a big part of what we're going to be called to do in these next seven years, and in particular in the next six months, as we have a succession of waves like this. And rem a reminder, you know, we're called to be that calm in the chaos. How can we do that? So as we're considering nature, and, you know, maybe call on the elemental kingdom, uh, I don't know just yet, and I do feel like I'll... I'll return to that image of the medicine wheel and talk a little more about that. In a, and when I can do a video, I just wasn't able to do the video today. So I wanted to get this audio out. Um, so the opportunity here is to live as much as possible, close as close as possible to the nature of who we are individually and collectively. And from where I stand, we all, regardless of the color of our skin, regardless of the side of the aisle we'd sit on, or whether, you know, whatever our view of history, whatever our national heritage, whatever our ethnic identity, whatever even our spiritual lineage, whatever how we identify ourselves, and whether whatever we think, you know, is the right version or the wrong version, you know, despite all these differences, I believe we are one people held in an infinite grace. We are on the way together. We are called to be the calm and the chaos, but also to be the give to be a voice of love wherever possible, to to use our voice in a way that we help others to return to the true nature of who they are, um, as you know, we are at our core, one light, one life, one love, and we are invited to be one people held in, in an infinite grace. And this critical question about the nature of what is actually happening and being able to return to that true stream of who we are first individually, then in circles of belonging, and then with the larger issues that are quite complex because of the um, because of what is inauthentic, what is inorganic, what is unnatural, quite frankly. 
Um, it's it's going to take some time to sort it out. But this is the passage to a new society. This is the ushering in of a new era, rich in love. It is going to require each of us to really separate out the wheat from the chaff and to be able to discern. And it's it's a difficult process. And, and ultimately, it's about wholeness and integration. And it's about returning to a place of integrity. And none of us is exempt from the uh, from the tendency or the, the uh, dangers, let's just say, the danger of falling into that trap where we are in subtle ways even blaming or shaming ourselves or another. And it's important that we continue to connect to the three pathways of soul exploration, soul expression, and soul expansion, and that we embrace more and more of the light and the life and the love that we are, and that we stay on guard. Because what I have seen, um, and I've seen this both for myself and in others, um, and even in really, you know, people that I um, myself have put on a pedestal unknowingly sometimes, is that any of us can... um, fall prey to these um, energetic patterns that are not organic, natural, or authentic. And so it's going to be a challenging time as we move through these waves of change. So as we consider the nature of change, let's return to the true nature of uh, what is happening and let's focus there. Um, and, And some of us are called to be a a part of calling out what is not of the true nature, you know, in my own um, life and work, a part of my, um, my work is to um, be present to what is inauthentic in, in particular systems. um, And, and then to present to, to then present the, um, what I'm given to present or share in terms of the um, pathways uh, to, to greater meaning and purpose collectively specifically. Um, But, but also I hope individually. So I hope that there's been something helpful here for you. I'll, you know, as I said, probably return to that image of the medicine wheel um, and just wish you peace, grace and peace wherever you are and uh, be go gentle be gentle with yourself and as we each you know find our unique way forward um, and such honoring and love for all of us for making this journey because we we chose this and you know on one level we chose to be here to be um, be figuring this out in ways and looking for ways that we can come together and um, just much love